this video, I'm going to go over how we generate more revenue for our customers within the first few days of them working with us without spending a single dollar on ads. It's actually pretty simple. We do something called a database reactive. Now, a database reactivation is simply the act of trying to re-engage old leads that you may or may have not have worked with. Some of the common are simply maybe leads who just fall into cracks, who didn't have the time, didn't have the money for your services. Or you can also use it in the other way where it can be people who you've already worked with and now you want to upsell them or sell them on a maintenance package, that sort of thing. You typically want to wait a couple of months before actually running leads through a database reactivation campaign. We just like to do it whenever we first start working with somebody just to get them those quick wins. There's usually three different ways in which people use database reactivation campaigns. The first one would be clients that you never could have closed. It was too expensive. They didn't have time. They were too busy. That sort of thing. You can say, hey, look, remember us. The second one would be clients who you already have closed, but maybe, like I said earlier, you want to upsell them or sell them on a maintenance package. And the third way which I actually prefer. It's people who you've worked with to leave you some sort of review, whatever it is. Every single person who you have worked with, we try our best to get a review from every single person that works with the companies we work with. Just getting five to 10 more reviews in a week on Google can have a huge impact on your bottom line at the end of the year. The purpose of this video is going to be a lot more for people who you already have worked with. And now we're trying to upsell them on a new service, for example. You can do this in a bunch of different ways, a bunch of different formats, but the way that we're going to do it, the way I think that is most common is by simply running some sort of sub offer. And then once you're actually at their door, you can then upsell them on whatever it is you actually want. Here's how it's going to work. Simply put, we're going to send our current customers some sort of offer, so either SMS or an email. In this case, both. We're going to say, hey, look, we want you to respond to this email if you're interested in, in that product. Either they're going to respond with the keyword, which in this case is going to be yes or they're going to ignore you, or they're going to respond with something else. If they respond with yes, they're going to go straight back into your new lead funnel so you can treat them as if they're a new lead. If they don't respond, they're eventually going to drop off and then you can do with them as you wish. Or lastly, if they respond with something else or they have a question, anything like that, then you'll be made aware of it and you can then respond to them manually. Now, if you want to save yourself the trouble of actually building out all these workflows, there's going to be a link in the description where you can actually have access to this and a couple of different automations for getting started in Go High Level, plus a 14 day free trial. Now, but if you aren't aware of what Go High Level is, it's this CRM slash workflow automation helper that can help you keep track of your business, of your leads, help you send SMSs, hand send emails, make websites, that sort of thing. So if that sounds interesting, you can click the link in the description. You'll have access to the workflows we're talking about today, plus a bunch of different for just getting started in high level. And there's a 14 day free trial. For everybody else, let's get back to building this ourselves. Now, once you're in high level, the first thing we need is a list of people to send these SMS and these emails to. So we're gonna head over into contacts on the left-hand side, and then you'll see this is more of a test account. But the first thing you want to do is actually import a list of contacts. This can be people you work with, people you haven't, leads who fall through cracks, et cetera. And you're going to go ahead and click on import contacts. Now, it's important to make sure that you import them in the right format. If you're unsure, you can just click on this thing right here, and that'll take you to a page that looks like this, and it'll give you all of the requirements. And the list we're going to be using is just going to look like this. It's a bunch of dummy information about first name, last name, email address, phone number, date of latest completed projects, since these are people who have, we have already worked with tags, DB sending for database and status, and then the do not disturb, which is just if they want to be called or not. So going back to high level, just drag and drop your file here. And you, to do that, all you have to do is press on download right here and go to comma separated values or CSV. It's going to give you a little, you can then import this right here and then press on next. Now it's going to give you a bunch of different fields. You just have to make sure that they match. So email address, for some reason, wasn't able to detect it. So I simply have to go in manually and type in, this is an email, that's a phone number. The data latest complete product, since this isn't a typical field that you would find in a CRM, I went ahead and actually, you can ignore it, but I actually went ahead and created a custom value or a custom field for this to make sure that I want this in my CRM. The status we can ignore and do not disturb is simply the ND right there. Fantastic. And then I can either decide to import this status or not. I'm going to don't import since all of these are going to be one. Once you press next, you can name this whatever you'd like. So I'm going to call it DB Solar. It's called DBR. Then submit. Now, depending on how many you have, obviously here I only have 10, but you may have thousands of leads. This might take quite a while. All you have to do is just wait for it to update. And now you have a list of contacts that you can now send 
uh, email blast or SMS blast too. Now that we have our list, we do have to send them something. So in order to kickstart our database reactivation, head over on the left-hand side to automation. And this is really the, like the meat and the bones of GoHello. It allows you to create these automations to automatically perform tasks in your CRM. So if you look it down, and by the way, you can access all of these by simply using the link that I have in the description. It'll give you access to all this. Now, if I go into DB reactivation start solar, as you can see here, all it is, it's just a basically a long chain of texts and emails and waiting uh, modules. The first thing that happens is we wait one minute. This is just to avoid any glitches. We then, we're then sending an SMS to every single person that is going to go through this workflow, the caller automation. And now another part that's really interesting about Goa Level is this idea of custom values. If you have never used Goa Level, this is basically a placeholder for every single lead that you have in your CRM. So instead of having to write manually, John, Mary, Adam, whatever, you can just use a custom value right here and then select the contact and you have all the information. You can even go to custom fields and have the latest project completion date and they will automatically fill it in whenever it sends it to somebody. Let me show you an example. So for example, in my SM, the email is going out. I have user first name, which is myself, and then the user email. Let's set it at team gmail at all my .com. And then I have the subject, which is, hey, contact first name. It's going to be a great example. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to do a test email. I'm going to send it to myself. Now this is, it might not fill in all the information because this is not an actual lead. It's just being sent to myself, but it should be a good example or a good demonstration of what this is. And now if I go in my email, I get something that says, Hey John, but there's no, this doesn't, it doesn't say anything here about John. It's just the first name. So if this was for Mary, this would be say, Hey Mary. And I use my name here again. And here which is team that all might. This doesn't actually say team on all my here. It says the contact email. That's the power of custom values and how it makes your work so much faster. Now, if I keep going, if I remove this, I'll put it back to user email. And now all we're doing in this case, this is for a roofing company and now they're now offering solar. So we're saying if you were, since we're now offering solar, we're sending you a message saying, since you already worked with us, we're offering you a free complimentary solar inspection. Please reply with the word yes. And we'll share the details. That's all we're asking. And the email says the same thing. It says exclusive complimentary inspection for our value customers. Please check your SMS and reply. Yes. And this is basically all we're doing. We're just repeating different versions of that, but we're waiting a little bit in between just to give them time to respond. And it says, please reply yes to book. And same thing with emails over and over again. Now the whole purpose of this is we want to re-engage them. So what happens when they say yes? Well, that's actually where the second part of this automation comes into play. If you look here, it says DB reactivation customer replied yes. If I click here, this is being triggered by one thing. And all this says is that if the customer replied, which is the trigger in this case, if the customer replied with to this specific workflow, which was the DB reactivation star solar, if the if whatever they replied with contains the word yes, then we're updating the contact, we're updating the opportunity to be sent back to new lead. So if I scroll back into the other automations and if I go to my opportunities, you'll see here one says new lead. So what happens when something goes into the new lead column and you can see it right here, I'm being notified by email, I'm being notified by SMS and there's a tag that's being added as a new lead. So I'm immediately notified and then they're then put into this automation workflow. If, if the customer replies, but it's not with the word yes, or if it's just something else, then I get an internal, I get an email that basically just saying that just says, Hey, new response alert. This person contact name, whoever it is, for example, John has replied to your text message. Please check your inbox for their response. And then you can go ahead and manually. Now, once you actually have your workflow all set up, the actual initiation of this is actually pretty simple. All you have to do is go into your contacts where you import all the leads, select the ones that you want to select or the ones that you want to import. Now, since I already have most of them, I simply have to remove these. But you could also just filter them through the tags. So if I do DDB, all of these are selected through the DB tag. Same thing. So once you have your leads, all you have to do is press on this little robot icon here. And it's going to say add to campaign slash workflow. Go to add to proceed. Add slash proceed. Then go to the DB reactivation start solar. And depending on how many leads you have, if you have less than 100, for example, then you can do them all at once. But if you have more of them, it's recommended to not do more than 100 a day or more than 100 even every two days. 
So all I do is I would add in drip mode. And then the action you could say, DBR and start, you can put it, for example, tomorrow. Cash quantity for 100 repeats after two days. So now every two days, you're going to send out 100. And then you could take out the day that you don't want to send these, like the weekend maybe. In process between hours, you could put just 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Add to campaign slash workflow. And then that's pretty much it. Your DBR, your database reactivation has officially begun. And you can now start blasting away. And now once you have them back in your CRM, they can then through the, they go to the different stages, go through, through these different automation at each stage. For example, the one that has new lead we just saw, the one which is an hour after. So for example, if an hour after you still haven't been able to reach them, they get an acknowledgement email, plus an SMS, et cetera, et cetera. If, and once you're actually booked in, they also get following up on your roofing proposal. So this is, would be after the proposal has actually gone out. Obviously, you can tweak this to your specific needs, but if you want to have take a look at all of these yourself. But now I won't go through all of them if you want them during the description. Otherwise, that is how you simply set up. Now, obviously, this can get a lot more complicated. You can have there's plenty of videos on YouTube about how to really tune in or dial in the database reactivation part of it. But I think, especially if you're just getting started with high level, it's very easy to get distracted or even lost in all the stuff that you can do. So I thought I'd keep it as simple as possible. If there's anything you want me to cover a bit more and go high level, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, you can access this template using the description, your trial, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.